It really does, doesn't it? Drinking parties, lust, <laughs> uh, sensuality. Wow. Now, let's read verse 4. In all this, they are surprised that you do not run with them into the same excess of dissipation. And they malign you. The old crowd says, hey, how come you don't go with us anymore? And they're surprised. What's wrong with you? You know. And then they make fun of you. You got religion. You know. <laughs> and... Uh, And so the root meaning of holiness is what? Different. God said, I want you to be different. Any old dead fish can float downstream with the current. God said, I want you to go against the current of your society, of your culture. I want you to be different. I'm calling you to holiness. I'm calling you to difference, to a life of difference. And uh, if you want to make a difference, you have to be different. And I don't know about you, but I want to do more than make a buck. I want to make a difference with my life, don't you? And therefore, that means we got to be different. We got to march to the beat of a different drum. We got to live different. And we got to go against the current of our society today. Look at this verse in 2 Corinthians. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And so the old life is to go when we come to Christ. And, uh, and, and then that, that's a battle, isn't it? That's a battle. Uh, because uh, old habits don't go easy, do they? You know. And uh, it's tough. It's a battle. It's not easy to live in this world and maintain a holy walk. The world continually tries to get you to f- to, to fit into their mold and to, to, to uh, think like they think, to have their perspective. Look what God says in Romans 12. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, transformed by the renewing of your mind. It all starts in our mind. And so let me give you five incentives to be different number one the glory of God it's in verse 13 where it speaks of the revelation of Jesus Christ Jesus Christ will be revealed to us one day did you know that we're going to see Jesus one day bodily Jesus ascended into heaven before he did he said to Thomas look look here you can reach here and feel the nail prints in my hands if you want to (laughs) he was there Jesus Christ became the God-man. He took upon himself humanity in Bethlehem. And and then he got a new glorified body when he came forth from the tomb. He still has that body today in heaven. And what he became, the God-man, he will always be. And then he sent his spirit 50 days later on the day of Pentecost to dwell within us. And when you receive him, you receive his Holy Spirit to dwell within you. And... uh, and, but, and so we, we have a relationship with him, not based on the physical, but based on the spiritual. And we saw it last week in verse 8 that we have not seen him. Peter mentions that in verse 8 of chapter 1. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice. Peter said you've not seen him, and you don't see him now. And that was different for Peter, because Peter had seen him. You know, and uh, had touched him and had walked with him and had eaten with him and had fellowshiped with him. And, and Peter said, but you've never seen him. But now, a few verses later, he speaks of the revelation of Jesus Christ. I have not seen him. I've been talking about him for 40 years. I have never seen him physically, but I will. And you have not seen him, but you will. Our present life is governed by this future hope we will see Christ we live in expectation of that at the revelation of Christ Jesus Christ will be revealed to us we used to sing about it what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land when I look into his face the one who saved me by his grace number two the second reason 
incentive to live for God is the holiness of God. Verses 14 and 15. Let's read 15. But like the Holy One who called you, be holy. I underline that in red in my Bible. Like the one who, like the Holy One who called you, be holy, God says. Be like him, God says. Don't we as daddies just love it when somebody says, you know, you got your baby there and say, somebody says, oh, look, he's got his daddy's eyes, you know. <laughs> we, just, we just love it, you know. And uh, I like what somebody said to me one time. They said, you know, I got three beautiful kids, two beautiful girls. And somebody said, oh, man, they got their, they got their good, good looks from their daddy. And of course, I smiled and they said, because their mother still, still has hers. You know, but anyway, we as parents, we love it when somebody says, oh, they got their daddies, whatever, you know, and we're so proud, you know. Well, our heavenly daddy says, I want you to bear my image. He says, like the holy one who called you, be holy. Be holy. God calls us to follow him and to be different from our day, from our culture. Children inherit the nature of their parents. And Peter mentions this in 2 Peter 1.4. We are partakers of the divine nature. You know, I said that Jesus ascended into heaven bodily. He's there bodily. But his Holy Spirit came here. The Spirit of Christ. And when you open your heart's door and you invite Jesus to come into your heart, the Bible says you are a partaker of the divine nature. You have a new nature. A new unselfish nature given to you. A new holy nature. We call him the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes to live within you. So, does that mean you're perfect from that day forward? Well, it'd be neat if we were. (laughs) But the problem is, you still have the old nature you were born with. The selfish nature. The naturally selfish. And so the two conflict. And uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit... We overcome our natural selfishness. I want you to see this, though, that God calls us to follow him, to be different. It is a call. We see it there in verse 15. Like the Holy One who called you, be holy. God has a call upon your life. He has called you to be holy. There are five calls in 1 Peter. This is the first of five. There are four more. And I won't take time to point them all out to you, but... but There are five calls to five different things. The first call is to holiness. And uh, maybe we'll see the others as we go along. uh, But with great privilege comes great responsibility. It is a great privilege to have the Holy Spirit come into our lives. And with that comes great responsibility to respond to the call of God. Number three, the third incentive to holy living is in verse 17 and excuse me in verse 16 because it is written you shall be holy for I am holy and it is the word of God the word of God first of all the glory of God secondly the holiness of God and thirdly the word of God it is written carries with it great authority remember back in Matthew chapter 4 when Jesus was tempted three times three times Each time he was tempted, he said, it is written, it is written, it is written. And he faced the devil with the word of God. Look at this verse, 2 Corinthians, having therefore these promises. What promises? The promises in the book. Having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all defilement of flesh and spirit, Perfecting holiness in the fear of God, the reverence of God. 